I'm about to show you guys my retwist. Did I say that right? Retwist, yes. There's always a part of my videos where my hair looks crazy. <laughs> my retwist routine. I'll get started real quick by showing you guys my products. As you know, I'm a castor oil fan. I do castor oil, olive oil combo. You guys can always pick what kind you wanna use, whatever is best for your skin. I have eczema in my head and on my body. Next, water. You have to have a spray bottle and a comb, scrunchie. Honestly, I've used all different kinds of combs to complete my retwist. I just feel like rat tail combs happen to be the best for getting the best parts. But honestly, when you're doing your own, I don't know about you magicians out there, but you're bound to get kind of eh parts because you can't see in the back. It's a process, guys. So let's just take it step by step, row by row, and enjoy this. One of the most important things that you're gonna need when you're doing your retwist on your own is a mirror. I don't know how you're gonna do a retwist without a mirror. And of course, you will need double prong retwisting clips, which my son seems to be obsessed with. Oh wait, let's back up. My name is Chris. Welcome to my journal, guys. Okay, can we just take a moment to talk about how long my locks have gotten? I just haven't had a lot of time recently to focus on my lock journey, but I'm trying to spend more time um, caring for them. Okay. Turn around. After spraying a healthy dose of water, I'll get started with parting my hair. Now, like I said, this part is going to be pretty difficult when you're doing your own retwist. The back section is always the hardest. Over the years, I've become less and less concerned with the perfection of my parts and more just concerned with the healthiness of my hair. Lots of hydration keeps your scalp and locks healthy. The way I see it is, a healthy scalp grows healthy hair. When I'm doing with my fingers when I twist from the part where there is no new growth i'll probably have to show you a better version but where there's no new growth uh and it's just the, the solid lock i start twisting from there and then i hold on to the new growth and i slowly do twist my finger around like this to kind of guide the frizzly new hairs into the locking position i want it to twist into the lock just like that is all this new growth. Just take it from where the lock actually is, where it's locked already. And I start by twisting that, and then I move my hand up to the new growth, and kind of just hold on to it. And as it twists into the lock, I'm twisting my finger around it. Yeah, I try not to retwist these too tight because that can also thin out your locks faster. I have had questions in the past about how rough I'm being or gentle I'm being with my locks as I part them and separate them. There are going to be times that your hair is so tangled and you don't want to pull at the straggly hairs and I've learned that the hard way because that too can cause damage, breakage, um, and of course thinning of your locks. It helps to get a scissor if those um, locks are particularly stubborn and stuck to fused together. You know, it honestly just depends on the texture of your hair and exactly how long it's been since your last retwist. For now, they're pulling apart pretty easily. And if I get to a spot where they're not, I'm gonna show you guys what I mean with the scissors. I really try not to use the scissors in the back because I can't see what I'm doing and I get paranoid and scared. Some people like to use the stickier, heavier duty 
uh, locking gels and creams and things like that. I don't because it can irritate my eczema really, really badly. I don't want to make any enemies by saying this, but I've noticed that those locking creams, they have so many additional ingredients. They're not really like as natural. Your locks reflect every ingredient, everything that you do to your hair. That's why it's extremely important to be picky about the products that you use on them. And in the beginning, there is that like really awkward looking, you know, phase where your locks are not long enough to really do much with. It's exciting to watch them grow long, but it's so worth letting that time period of having the short locks and once that length is on your head, there's no going back. Okay, now to be honest, I don't have a whole lot of explaining to do on the back portion other than what I've already shared. So we're gonna kind of just skip ahead in the video and then I'll show you guys what's going on. Okay, I'm about to do the unthinkable. <laughs> there is a locking complication right here. I must have started to take what was meant to be one lock because as you can see, look at the row. There's one here. This is supposed to be one, one lock. This has somehow split into two locks and the top one is thinning out so much hanging on to barely anything. <laughs> I'm gonna save this one in case I lose a lock somewhere. I have one to spare. Now I can lock this hair into this lock right here and let it grow back into one lock. Okay, YouTube family. Now you know that this channel is essentially a digital extension of my paper journal. So whether I'm talking life, motherhood, or locks, it is literally all about the journey. I've gotten plenty of valuable advice and tips from my lock journey from quite a few of my viewers. And I do my best to incorporate as many things as I can to help me in my lock journey. Now this experience in particular was a first for me. I'll admit it's been quite a few months since my last retwist, but in three years, I've never had a lock do this. If you have any tips on what to do when your locks start joining together unevenly, please drop it down in the comments below. No matter how long I'm on this lock journey, I am not a professional loctician, and there's just no way to know exactly what to do in every possible hair experience. That's why we call it a journey. So let's all learn together. It's done. My hair is done. I used to be able to do my retwist really fast, like 45 minutes type fast. And that was when Kai was even younger and more distracting. It takes me so much longer now, it's crazy. I think it's just really because they're getting long and the longer your locks are, the longer they take to do. That's another reason why you shouldn't rush the process. As usual, I'm gonna tie down my locks. This is a, like a breathable, thin scarf that I put over it. My scalp loves retwisting day because it gets all of that good hydration and oil. I wish I had time to do it more often. I know there's no exact rule, but what works best for you guys? 
because for me at the halfway point of the month i typically do a wash because my eczema gets so bad my scalp needs to be cleaned before my retwisting time is actually ready which is what probably contributes to a lot of that um, tangling it's a whole thing for me but what works for you drop it down in the comments below tell me about all of your lock journey i'm trying to get more into my own and share it reach out to me on social media at chris.sule until next time guys stay well peace I'm too tired to be cute. Too soon. I am in the middle of retwisting my hair and I had to stop so that I can run and catch the Walmart uh, the Walmart car center. I just need to get a tire replaced. Yes? Dancing to my own thoughts, man. That's how I vibe.